So I need to make a correction at the end of our uh, notes from last time. So hopefully you have that still handy, wherever it is. There we go. Okay, so I at the end here, I wrote my function f of x is equal to f of 2 plus the integral from 2 to x. And then I also used x here. That's a no-no. These can't be x. Or I got to change this to something else. It doesn't matter what I call these. But these cannot be the same thing. Because remember, I'm putting x from here into the x there. So these should be something else. Uh, most of the time, you're going to see t's. So they're going to change it into a t. But um, just as a little note. So I made an error at the last end. Those have to be something besides x. Or this has to be something besides x if you want to leave those as x. I guess it really doesn't. No, no, no. It says it have to be f of x. So those have to be x's. So let's just go back and talk about that one more time before we move on. So this is this idea, really important idea of accumulation. What I have now, in other words, what I want, I want f of b. That's equal to what I started with. Wherever I began, it doesn't matter. I can pick whatever I want as my beginning value. And then I would have to go from, so wherever I started, plus whatever I accumulated. Whatever I started, plus what I've done since then, basically what I've accumulated, will take me to where I am right now. So this equation is going to pop up. Like I said, I guarantee that it's going to be a free response, at least one of them, maybe more. So let's go ahead. I think we're finished with this now. And we've got the top of those. We already did those with my correction from last time that those can't be the same variable. And why was it okay over here? Ooh, probably isn't. Those probably should all be something. I'm going to change them all just in case. I don't like it. I, I guess it doesn't really... Uh, I don't know. I'm going to just call them T's for safety's sake. So I don't like that those. I'm going to leave myself a note. T, not X, for next year. Okay, so this is what you're going to see. This is going to be a free response. It's not going to be raw sewage, but it's going to be something like this. It's going to be one of these type of problems. Okay, so raw sewage is leaking from the storage tank at a rate given by now that's a kind of a sneaky way to do this but you've got to be paying attention so this is a rate so this is already kind of a derivative it's already a prime so it doesn't seem like it because they just use the letter s which is a little bit sneaky like i said but it's the same thing this is a rate so this is how things are changing this is not how much is in there at a time so the, I don't know how much raw sewage I have in there, but this is how fast it's leaking out, which makes sense that that's negative. So just be careful. So the, the raw sewage leaking out is measured in gallons per hour. Uh, the time is measured in hours. At time two, there are 572 gallons of raw sewage. So that's our beginning. That's our hint. That's where we're going to start. So how much raw sewage has leaked out of the tank from hour, from two until five hours? So we have to start off with So I wanted to think that through to make sure that what I was thinking made sense. Okay. So this isn't how much sewage. This is how much has leaked out over that time period. So I'm not trying to start at 572. I'm not starting at this amount. This time I just want to see how much it has changed. So how much has the change occurred? from two hours to five hours. So that means I would accumulate everything from two until five of S of T DT. Now luckily this is a uh, graphing calculator permitted problem so I'm not going to try to integrate that on my own. I'm going to go to my calc, integrate from two until five of negative e to the square root of, well, we can use t, I'm going to use x, dx. And that gives us negative 19.722. Now we should put some units on this. So we've lost, so let, actually let's do a little write-up. So um, the tank... leaked 
19.722 units, yes, gallons of sewage gross from, remember how we used to have to do this? Time T equals two hours to time T equals five hours. That accumulation, that's how much is accumulated. That's how much was gone. That's how much has changed over that time period. Okay, how much sewage was initially in the tank when it started leaking at time? Now, this is a different question. This wants to know not how much leaked out. It wants to know how much did it start with. So I would calculate. Now, this is where I do want to have a beginning. So I'm going to start at two hours into the process. I know at two hours, there were 572 gallons. I'm gonna add on the accumulation from there. So that's from two hours until how many hours? Zero. Now this is backwards. If you wanna flip it around, fine. I don't care because I'm gonna put this into my calc anyway. So now I can grab my calc. So, well, let's just retype it. 572 plus the integral from 2 until 0. Negative e to the ah, square root of x, right? Yeah, x. Okay, so does that seem as a reasonable answer? We have five, yeah, it, there's more in there, so that's a good sign. Looks like it's draining out faster and faster over time. Uh, units. This is a measure of how much sewage was actually in there, so that would just be gallons. Now, you always want to make sure that you write this out. That's a point, and that's a point. Those things are a point on their own, and that, so this would be worth three points right there. Your starting value plus how much you've changed. Write an integral equation that an integral equation that gives the amount of raw sewage in the tank at any time t. So they're calling a of t to represent the amount of sewage. So for us, what would that look like? It looks something like this: the amount of raw sewage equals. Let's have you try to figure it out. Let's have you try to figure it out. All right, let's see how you did. So this is a, an accumulation. This is where I'm going to begin at some place and go from there. I'm going to call this 572. Notice up here, we just wrote F of 2 every time. Now, if you want to just put negative 2 in there, either one of those things are acceptable. So I'm going to start at 572. I'm going to go from 2 hours, because that's what's happening. 572 is what's happening at 2 hours, until sometime T. We don't care. And our function, be careful. I almost fell for this again. This isn't, I can't use S of T again. I got to use some other letter. So I don't know. I'm going to call it S of H for hours, I guess. And then that, don't forget your DH at the end. Should have used P for poop. <laughs> Pretty funny, right? Okay, another calculator permitted problem. At the start of Christmas break, at T equals zero days, a man weighed 180 pounds. Oh boy, I wish. If the man gained weight during the break, he's not mentioning any names. It's Corpy. A rate modeled by, so this is another rate. Now what's nice about this, he's nicer than the last problem. This rate is given to us as a derivative. So we already know that it's a rate or a change, which makes sense. Remember, it also says pounds per day. That's a change in, uh, that's a change of rate. So what was the man's weight? at the end of the break 14 days later. So if W prime of T is how much that weight is changing per day, W of T would be his weight. So I'm gonna call W of, we wanna do his weight at 14 days. Okay, so is there any weight that we can start at that, that we know that he started at? Yeah, his weight at day zero. His weight at day zero is 180. Now you can also mark this if you want to as W of zero, either way is fine with me. Plus, now we accumulate how much change has happened. So what day did this start? Day zero, and we're going to day 14. 
of, I'm just going to call this W prime of T dt because we're allowed to use our calculator at this spot. So I've got my setup. I can go to my calc now, 180 plus, I clear out the other one, 180 plus the integral. You should try to do this on your own if you haven't already. 14 of, I got to actually type it in. I didn't store this as the equation. 10 sine of, do I need to graph this? At what time was he heaviest? At what time was the man heaviest? That's a max. I'm going to graph this sucker. So I don't have to type it in both, both places. Oh, I already did. Ah, I was ahead of you guys. So I've already typed this in here. Now when I go back to this, 0 to 14, and I can just put Y1 in there. Remember, that's alpha F4, Y1. And you're still, though, changing according to X. So we get 187. 0.458, not a very good five, pounds. So at the end of the break, he only gained seven pounds. Not too bad, right? Well, it's kind of bad, but not terrible. Well, how did he do over break? How, you know, maybe at the end he had a New Year's resolution, had a couple days to, to get back in shape or got serious after Christmas was over. So at what time was the man heaviest during his break? Well, let's leave a little note to ourselves. What would we have to calculate? The man is heaviest. When, okay, go back to this situation, looking up here. What would have to be true to figure out when we get the maximum value for the weight? Think back to what we did with maxes and mins. All right, well, hopefully, pause it if you haven't got it yet. Hopefully, you figured out, okay, so my weight function is W of T. So my max of that is going to be when W of T equals zero or undefined. So W prime of T equals zero. So I want to figure out when does W prime of T equal zero. Well, we've got this function for W prime of T. We can go ahead and figure that out in our calculator. The man is heaviest when W prime is zero. So therefore, T is going to be equal to, now we got to go figure out where that occurs. So I'm going to go to my calc. Like I said, I already typed it in. If you haven't, pause it. Then I'm going to make a window that's going to make sense for this story. So how many days are we talking about? From day zero to day 14. How much does his weight fluctuate? I don't know. I mean, you could pick whatever you want here and we could check. I always start with tens to see if I get in a good enough window. And yep, so he gained a max of 10 and lost. So he lost some weight, gained some weight, lost some weight. Let's figure out, though. We want to figure out when W prime. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is not his weight. My bad. This is not a picture of his weight. This is a picture of the rate of change of his weight. So when I did this the first time, I figured out what this value was. I figured that was his maximum weight. No, that's his maximum rate of change. His maximum weight is when W prime of T equals zero. This function is W prime of T. So we need to figure out where this thing equals zero. In other words, we need to figure out that spot right there. Second calc. Uh, actually, I'm going to take a guess first. That looks so nice. Let's trace right to eight. Yep, eight. So that time equals eight days. So if you want to, by the way, remember, if you don't remember, if you can't just guess and check, you go second calc and you want to find the zero. Get a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. And then your calculator will find that value for you anyway. But I just took a shot because it looked so nice and it was going to be eight. All right. So at what time was the man heaviest? So after eight days of his break, he was all plumped out. When was his weight at that time? I'm going to encourage you to pause here. Try to go back and see if you can figure out what that weight would be. Okay, so if I want to figure out his weight at eight days, that would be W of eight. Now we have to pick a place to start. We're going to start at the 180 again, day zero, and then we're going to accumulate from day zero until day eight of W prime of T dt. This is something that I can do on my calc. I'm going to quit out of here. Uh, so 180 from zero second enter, bring it, clear it out, and then second enter. Oh, no, you didn't. 
Come on, come on, come on. I can clear you out, and I got to hit second enter twice to go back to the one before. There we go. And I want to go only to eight instead of 14 this time. How much was Big Boy? Big Boy was up to 230. 230.929. What are our units? We've got units in this story. LBSs. Jeez. Big Boy almost put on, what would that be, 30, almost 50 pounds? Or at least 40, 40 plus. And then he ended up, what did he, what, was he at the end? Oh, no, that's what he was at the end. So he gained up. He went from 180. Yeah, he almost put up 50 pounds. 50 pounds, and then he lost 43 pounds back down. But still, good night, big boy. Okay, so that's the end. I encourage you to get into that homework. Hopefully, you've been doing it along the way. Wait until the very end basically means that you've got a 1,000 things that you don't understand. You got It's overwhelming if you wait that long. So at this point in the year, hopefully, you've got that figured out. Thank you.